It's no surprise that so many Brits are deciding to skip the south of France and the Costa del Sol and spend their summer holidays in the UK instead. And it's no surprise that investors are responding to this demand and new holiday accommodation is cropping up everywhere. For the last couple of years, this has been an extremely profitable way to invest in property. But now politicians have got holiday lets in their sights. So are politicians about to kill off the holiday letting market? Is it curtains for the Cotswolds, sayonara to Somerset and the death of Dorset? Well, keep watching because this is set to be the hot topic in property for 2022 and beyond. Just a quick look at some stats is enough to see why holiday lets are on so many politicians' radars right now. I thought Brits were supposed to be fans of queuing, but apparently the chaos at airports has led 77% of us to choose the UK as our summer holiday destination this year, with the average person planning three UK breaks. I'm doing something wrong. Bookings in 2022 are 30% up on the previous year, which in itself was unusually strong. Investors have been responding by creating more holiday let accommodation, with short-term lets now making up up to 7% of the housing stock in hotspots, uh, popular areas like Cornwall. A few years ago, that was only a little over 1%, so that's a huge and sudden increase. This is a problem because it's reducing the amount of housing available for locals and putting pressure on local services. And to make matters worse, it's being reported that landlords are kicking out long-term tenants so they can use the property for holiday lets instead and make more money. The issue is getting more and more attention and politicians are starting to get involved, which property investors will know from experience is rarely a good thing. Ah, here we go again. So how are politicians responding? Well, the first response was in Scotland, where the Scottish government passed a law in 2021 that required all holiday let accommodation to be licensed by 2024. The law also allows local authorities to apply to become control areas, which means the creation of new holiday lets will require planning permission, which can be refused if they feel it'll have a negative impact. Edinburgh recently became the first city to be designated a control area. In Wales, holiday lets will also be licensed, and the planning system is also being changed to differentiate between main homes, second homes, and holiday lets. Local authorities will, again, be able to require planning permission to change from one to another. They may also increase land transaction tax, which is the Welsh equivalent of stamp duty, on holiday lets and second homes. Now, holiday let operators in England can sit very quietly and hope no one notices them, but a private member's bill has already been introduced to Parliament that aims to introduce licences and restrict numbers. Private member's bills rarely come to anything in themselves, but political pressure is clearly building for something to be done, and I'd be amazed if we didn't see legislation in England at some point when the government has a bit more time on its hands. Also, and prepare yourself for some cynicism here, but groups like Shelter and Generation Rent have had some big wins recently, including the news that no-fault evictions are going to be abolished, and they need to keep having things to complain about in order to justify their existence, and it wouldn't surprise me if holiday lets were the next battleground that they pick. So what are we to make of all this? The thing is, I agree with the concerns that people raise around holiday lets, and I can't believe I'm going to say this, but many of the proposals that are being introduced actually sound quite sensible. It does seem weird to me that in many areas single lets need to have a license, and yet holiday lets don't. And in particular, the moves that are being made in Wales to distinguish between second homes and holiday lets in planning law make a ton of sense because they often get lumped in together, but they are completely different things and they have different effects on local areas. The annoying thing is, to a large degree, it is the government that have caused this problem in the first place. When they made the changes to the tax system in 2015 that disadvantaged normal lets, it left holiday lets intact. And then you had the pandemic with its ban on evictions with an end date that just kept moving and moving and moving. And I think that made a lot of landlords realise that the government could step in and have quite a serious effect on how they run their business. So is it any surprise that holiday lets have become relatively more popular? If they don't want investors to switch to holiday lets, then maybe they should just stop making life so difficult for normal landlords. But I suspect that they might instead go down the route of making life equally difficult for holiday let landlords instead. So what should you do about all this? Well, if you're in the holiday lets business already, then prepare for more legislation. I predict that within the next five years, you'll need a license across the UK, and obtaining one of those licenses may involve meeting new, tougher requirements that aren't currently in place. Also, I checked that your business would still be viable if it was taxed on the same basis as buy to let, because it wouldn't surprise me at all if its current tax advantages were removed. No, God, please, no, no, no. Most owners will be able to deal with this, 
But if you've got a business that's a bit marginal, it's just about working at the moment, then changes like the ones we've been talking about could tip you over the edge. And if you're thinking about getting into holiday lets, think carefully. Even with the changes that we've talked about, it can still work brilliantly. But don't go in thinking it's going to be the easy option, because it already isn't and it's only going to get harder. It can be a lot of work with high running costs and unpredictable income. So before getting involved, you need to be sure it'll be worth the hassle compared to normal lets, both now and in the future. And it's not just holiday lets where changes are coming. There are huge developments on the horizon that's going to affect the whole of the property market. We explain all of them in this video, so make sure you watch that one next.